yes, youth equipped to succeed. He is a former college and professional football player. He's been on ESPN, ABC, USA Today, and Sports Illustrated. He is also an entrepreneur as well as a motivational speaker. He's spoken in 5,000 schools and corporations in 51 countries, including Australia, India, England, Russia, Brazil, China, Japan, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. He graduated from USC with his team's highest grade point average in business finance. While playing at USC, he was his team's leading tackler, and he was an all-conference player. He was also selected to the All-American Strength Team and played in one of college football's biggest and most exciting games, the Rose Bowl. He won two championship rings, and after college, he signed with the professional football team, the New York Giants. Keith was one of the strongest players on the team during the preseason. He stands six foot one, weighs 290 pounds, and bench presses over 515 pounds. He leg presses over 1,800 pounds. Woo! Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Keith Davis. All right. So I'm going to tell you what, uh, those who don't know, uh, I don't live in California. I actually got on the airplane, flew several hours to get to California yesterday. We're here with a whole group of players for the Patriots, the Browns, the Packers, the Colts. A ton of us flew in to come to schools all over this extended Fresno area just to encourage and inspire you. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, I could be all the way, like I said, in Los Angeles on the West Coast or all the way in New York on the East Coast. And as she mentioned, I've actually been in over 58 countries around the globe. So whether it's uh, Japan or London, England, that's all great. But there is no better place to be than right here in the big city of Colinga, California. So we're gonna have a great time, is that cool? Okay, here y'all, is that cool? All my ladies in the house, let me hear you say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. All my fellas in the house, let me hear you say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I got some ninth graders, their voice had changed in like, oh yeah, what's up? It's all good, man. Secondly, I love every opportunity I get to speak in California because when I speak in California, I meet some teenagers who love some football. How many football fans we got in the house, all right? So this is what I want to know. I want to know where I'm my true, my pride. You with them when they up, you with them when they down, you with them all in between. If ain't nobody else with them, you don't let them know that you with them. We're my real Oakland Raider fans that we are. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, cool. All right, cool. All right, cool. For my Raider fans, can I do something special for y'all? Can't hear y'all Raider fans. Can I do something special for y'all? You know what I'm going to do for y'all today? I need to pray for y'all because y'all need some help, man. Pray for you for the Raiders, Lord. They need a miracle, you know. Million dollars and he ain't won one game yet. Lord, just give him a minute. Hey, I'm an OG. What well, I can't forget about the other group? Where my true, my pride, my life? Where my 49er friends and we all? Let me pray for y'all too. Lord, pray for them 49er fans. You know they all bougie, they bad and bougie. You know, so and you know, so. It's your, it's your OG. Hey, can I be real with you though? I'm actually a true Raider fan myself. I know I got this Giants jersey, she mentioned all the flu in and all that, but I actually was born and raised, it was a couple of hours south, right there in South Central Los Angeles. That's why I went to USC, man. USC got more Heisman trophies, national championships. I don't live in LA anymore, but um, three of my homeboys, good dudes that I played with, actually on the Raider staff. Uh, they coached the Raiders the last three years. I had a box come to my house with all kind of fresh new Raiders gear, dude hats, sweats, jackets, all that stuff. So I still be popping my Raiders stuff. So I, I, I really am praying for them, and I hope they can win one game coming up. This got to change, but it's all good. Secondly, 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 secondly. I was at a school. Uh, we came last year, and I had one of my homeboys from the Patriots. Like I said, it's a whole bunch of us here. And my boyfriend, the Patriots, is gigantic. I'm not joking. 
homeboy is a legitimate six foot eight, three hundred and sixty pounds. When he walked, we walked into a middle school, and he walked in, it was like. <sighs> <laughs> He hopped on the scale, and yeah. the scale just start blinking. And then it said, to be continued. <laughs> but on a real note, on a real note, little middle school dude looked at us, we walked into school, and he said, dang, y'all big. <laughs> and he asked that famous question students ask, high school and middle school. He's like, how y'all get that big? I said, my boy, you know what I'm saying? Did you ever try steroids? <laughs> and he looked real good. So my boy was like, no, nah, man, you know, I don't need no steroids. I've been drug tested, blood tested, lie detector tested. I don't need no steroids. I told him, I said, I don't need no steroids either. We just said, cornbread, fried chicken, mashed potatoes, collard greens. All right. But wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm in Colinga, California, right? And Colinga's like, Bullets, webbles, legs, legs. I got a mama that can cook. How many of y'all got mamas that can cook? How many of y'all got some grandmamas that can cook? Oh, yeah. We're going to invite you over for dinner tonight. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Me and you, bro, we're going to tear it up, man. It's all good, all right? It's all good. Cool. <laughs> can I say something else? Today I can't even school. Just to encourage you, inspire you. I want to share about just the greatness that's in you. And so I was hoping that you'll be more inspired than ever before. We did have a phenomenal time in the last assembly, but I do think they saved the best for last with you guys. So it's going to be phenomenal. We're going to hook it up. It's going to be hot. All right, so now, what I want to do before I get started, um, and then I got something very, very special at the end as well that I want to share, but I speak by visual aid, okay? So, and I cannot have any fun until I give away some of this money that's in my pocket. So I need some volunteers to help me out real quick. <laughs> should I get guys or should I get girls? I can't hear y'all, guys or girls? Oh, my ladies, they like to shop, all right? So I need two girls, all right? And uh, my girl, I see you with your head up. You got a little sleeve in the back. I see you right there, yeah, my girl. All right, get the back down, get out of here. My girl, my girl, I need a girl. Okay. Uh, this is what I need, this is what I need. I need one more young lady, y'all gotta help me on this one. I need the smallest, shortest, oldest, oldest girl in here. I need a tiny girl. Tiny. Oh, uh, she got a fan club back there. The little girl right there, put the long sleeve on your hand. I see you, come help me out to this. Let's get her hand clap, everybody, okay? So I got one girl, one girl. Oh, my fellas, say what's up? What's up? Fellas, I need y'all to say this one with me. Come on, here we go. Ladies, come up here with me, all right? Fellas, say this with me because I need to do it. All my fellas, say this with me, say it. I'm going to take y'all back with my grandmama. She's from Mississippi. What's up, ladies? How you listening to me? How you doing? How you doing? Fellas, say this with me. Everybody say it. Cornbread. Oh, Fried chicken. Macaroni and cheese. I need the biggest, widest, heaviest dude in here. Let's say this word together as a team. Everybody say the word dream. Dream. 
Dream. A little bit more than Cali passion. Everybody say dream. Dream. Now real quick, real quick. I'm not talking about the kind of dream that you just kind of hope and wish. I'm talking about the kind of one that they counted you out. Don't nobody believe in you. Maybe even your own mama, your own daddy didn't believe in you. That's why they left you with your auntie, your, aunt, your grandma. Because we got a lot of us living with our grandmas. I love my grandma. I'm talking about that kind of dream. Hold on. I'm talking about that kind of dream. They've been hating on you. Because they looked at you from the outside. So them haters who drink that haterade every day, they've been hating on you. But they don't know what's inside of you. They gave you a test in the state of California to measure you here, but they can't measure what's in here. I'm talking about that great dream that you're willing to work for, push for, stay focused for. Everybody say the word dream. Dream. Now, real quick, say this word. Everybody say the word choices. Choices. Voices. Voices. And you know, you cannot get to the great dream until we learn in high school that we have to make some right choices by listening to right voices. Some of you came here today, and I know what I'm talking about. Like I said, I was born right down south here. In a rough part of the city in Los Angeles, California, had a whole bunch of dudes in my hood, in my ear, wrong voice, trying to get me to make a wrong choice. Every morning, they was firing that blood up. <laughs> no good. And they doing that with you. They get drunk on the weekend, but you ain't about that because your dream is too great. So I'm going to challenge you today. I don't know where you're from. Don't know nothing about your background, your mama, your daddy. I don't know if you're rich or poor, tall or short. You could be white, black, Hispanic, or Asian. One thing I do know is you were not born a winner, and you were not born a loser either. You were born a chooser. You ain't a winner or a loser, you a chooser today. You gotta choose. I'm gonna ask you a question today. Because this is gonna determine your greatness and your dream. I'm gonna ask you what size dream did you choose? First kind of dream, let me have a little bit of fun. Here we go. First, I'm gonna give you some choices. First kind of dream. She was free. <laughs> she little. <laughs> they can see on this side, y'all can't see. I just put my hand around her. My hand bigger than half her arm and her shoulder. <laughs> Do me a favor, hold your hand up to see how big that money. That's all, that's crazy. <laughs> She's category number one. Everybody say little dream. Her dream's not little, but just category number one. I got some students just settling. But little dreams, you're born to be great. There's greatness in you. Come on, come on. I don't care what the test said. I don't care what the test said. I don't care what the score said. There's no little dream. Uh-uh. Nothing little about you. Don't give in to that. Come on, let's push, let's work. So anyway, little dream, I'm gonna have you sit right here. I'm gonna go to category number two for a second. How you doing? <laughs> got your girlfriends over here, they're yelling out for you. Here we go. Listen, I got my hand around her only because she's category number two. And this is not her app, this is not her real dream, but it's just another category. Everyone, she's about average height, average weight. Everybody say average dream. Average dream. I got some students today who's showing up, settling for average. I got some dudes who's showing up to class, you don't never bring a backpack, no book, ain't giving no effort, sitting up in class, just not doing nothing, head down. Can I say something to you, man? That might have worked for your uncle. And maybe your big brother, he could have been great, but he settled for average, but that ain't gotta be you. I don't care how small your talent is. I came here today to challenge you. Let's get beyond that, bro. So no, no average dreams. Here we go. Let's roll with it. Big boy, come on now. Everybody say big dream. Big You got a thick neck, man. Man, yoking it up. Big dream, everybody say big effort. Yeah. Bigger dream, bigger effort. You gotta be solid, not move. Peer pressure ain't moving you. My man, you so thick, bro, you yoked up. I'll call you my thick dream, okay? <laughs> Hold on, boom. Cause when I dream is big, I ain't moving. I don't care what come at me. Friends hate me, I don't care. Your boyfriend broke up with you, I don't care. Girlfriend, I don't care. Little clip don't care about you in there, they talk about you, they got their little click about you, they spread rumors on Instagram, I don't care. Dream is big, I ain't moving, step back. I came all the way to Cali today to challenge you, not for a little dream, have a dream, big dream. I want you to have something that lasts for longevity, commitment, focus, character. <laughs> Everybody say big old dream. <laughs> 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 so listen. Shh. 
I, and I, I knew this, and this is why I always use the teacher at the end, because I need somebody that represents longevity and commitment. What I'm saying is, high school is one thing, or middle school, high school, but I, I got kids who lose their focus after high school. And so we want to go way beyond that, okay? So I'm going to challenge you for a giant dream and a giant commitment. Now, sir, I'm going to have you stand back, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand between you and him, and all three of us, we're going to make a package deal. I came to this assembly today to challenge you to have an unlimited perspective. That means that no one in my family down there in South Central ever went to college, but I did. Everybody say, no limits. No limits. Nobody in your family ever started your own, own business, but you will. Everybody say, no limits. No limits. Look at it. Look at it. Look at me. No limits. Everybody, I'm going to give you one nickname to remember us by. Everybody say, Buffet Tree. What? Buffet? Golden Corral Tree. No limits. Everybody say, no limits. No limits. Shh. Y'all stay right there, real quick. Had a little fun. Let me do this real quick. I have with me one inch of steel. I'm going to talk about some stuff that holds us back from the dreams. I got one inch of steel. <laughs> Listen to me. I brought this steel because I have some students out there today. You got some, some things holding you back. California and Texas. I actually got my home in Texas now. California and Texas are a trip because they have more prisons than any place in America. For my homies who gang bang and trying to be cool, bro, it's a whole economy, man. You get locked up in that system, and it keeps you going, bro. I ain't gonna even get into that right now. I got some students here today. You're not going for the dream because you're living behind bars. Not prison bars, not steel bars. Those are not the bars that are holding you back. The strongest bars are whole high school student back to what I call the bars on the inside, the invisible bars. Number one invisible bar, you can't see it, you can't touch it, but y'all all know it's real, it's called depression. I got students who giving up, man, not on basketball, they giving up on life. I was just at a school two days ago. I was in Washington, D.C., and then I went down to Florida. A young girl came up, boom, she crying like crazy. She smart, she bright, but she done gave up in her emotions. She pulls her little hoodie up on me. I look at her arm, she's showing me stuff she ain't showed nobody. Cuts all up and down her arm. She's telling me she a cutter. I said, why are you crying like that? She said, because you asked me about my daddy. My daddy, he don't call, he don't write, he don't visit. He treat me like I ain't even his dog. You know that boo, you ain't mine. I said, don't get bitter, forgive him. Because she had put up her leg. Show me she had cut hate in her arm and her leg. You know how many students I got wake up in the morning, don't like themselves, hate themselves, wish something was different about them? I'm here to say, no more bars. I got some of you, man, living behind the bars, the drugs, alcohol, your friends. We got to get rid of the bars today. I want you to know you can do it. There's nobody like you, man. I don't know what happened with your mom and your daddy. I don't know what your girlfriend did to you, your boyfriend that made you give up and quit. I don't know what happened last year. All I know is, this is your day for the big dream. So this is what I'm going to do. On the ESPN World Strongman Competition, they would do something. They would grab an inch of steel like this, and on ESPN, them dudes would place it behind their neck, and they would try to just whoo, bend the steel while it was behind their neck. There was one dude on ESPN, he was pulling so hard on the steel that he actually blew his elbow out trying to bend the steel. I'm sharing that with you because I had an injury and some of you can see it actually if you look uh, on this side. I have a, a scar on my elbow because I actually tore my tricep and then do elbow surgery, they repaired it. So it still kind of messes me up. So I don't do this very often, but today I want to just do this analogy. I haven't done it in a long time. I want to talk a little bit about getting rid of the bars today. No more bars. Let's dream, let's go for it, let's work for it. So I'm going to do something on ESP and they would do, they would grab the steel place behind the neck and try to bend it. Today, I'm not going to place the steel behind my neck and try to bend it. If I get really, really fired up and I, I try to warm up so you can see I'm a little sweating because I warmed up, trying to stay warm so I can do this, 
But I want to try with everything I can to grab the steel. And as we talk about getting rid of the bars, I'm not going to put it behind my neck and try to bend it. I'm not going to put it on my head and try to bend it. But I'm going to try to bite this steel in my teeth. Now some people say, listen to me. If, if, I can, if I can get it, if I can't get it in my teeth, then I'm going to try it. You know, on, on, on my head, but we're gonna go for it. And we're just gonna talk about getting rid of the bars. Everybody say no more bars. No. Come on, everybody say no more bars. No. I'm gonna need y'all to get me fired up, and we're gonna do this last analogy. Are y'all ready? Come on, I can't hear y'all. Y'all ready? Everybody say no more bars. Come on, help me out. Here we go. Let's go for it. Yeah. time we got to the edge of that tunnel, I'm not exaggerating, it was so loud, there were 90,000 people in the stands. We was pumped up, helmets on, click, click, gloves on, wrist tape, shh, shh. all everybody's buffed out, team together. The cameras was up in our face, and I promise you, it was so loud, it felt like the stadium was vibrating. We right down there in LA, listen, listen. But all week long, the ESP and experts had predicted we was gonna get beat. Because the team we get ready to play, they ain't good, they phenomenal. Ain't nobody beat them all year long. They dominate, and we already got three losses. We run out on this field, we hide. We don't care about no ESP and experts. First series of the game, crowd so loud, we call the signals by hand, you can't even hear. QB come up, blue 88, red 44, up, and that ball snap, we explode off the ball, we coming at my man, my man drops back, sets up, and with precision, shoo, shoo, up and down the field they go. We cannot stop them. He was a great QB and winning a few Super Bowls eventually. And it was one of the worst 
first halves I had ever been in. They embarrassing us. And we're embarrassing ourselves in front of millions of people on this television. At the end of the half, it was so bad because not only we get beat bad, but we got zero. How many high school students do I meet who woke up this morning and every morning looking in the mirror feeling like zero? I know you ain't got the clothes everybody got. I know you wish you was different, your hair, your eyes, your clothes, your hair. No, 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 you're valuable. Your uniqueness is your value. I was in Paris, France, and I saw that painting that was called the Mona Lisa worth $1.3 billion. Homegirl didn't have nothing in her hair, no jewelry, no nice clothes. She just had her own unique smile. <coughs> the crowd that was cheering so loud for us in the beginning, as we run off the field, because we're playing horrible, I'll be real with you. They made this one sound. Boo. Everyone do that with me. Boo. I know that sound. I wanted you to hear it for a second. I got some students who show up every morning. You don't want to be here. Because every morning, that somebody in this school is booing you. That little click booing you. Especially my girls. Girls real good about booing other girls. Dude, I'm here to say one thing to you. We got in that locker room. Coach simply said, I don't care about the crowd. We can beat this team. Some of you have been booed by your own daddy. Had a girl told me, you know how moms and dads split up, but the worst part was pops move away. He get a new wife, new kids. She like, you don't call, you don't rock, you don't read. She just angry, she bitter, right? My dad. One of the homeboys on my team. We speak on last night, we talking. They like, bro, her real bad. When your mama don't want you. And he said, man, my daddy left me before I even came out the womb. I had that umbilical cord around my neck. They didn't know where I was gonna live, I came out. He said he came out like two months early. Pops was gone before he even came out. Ooh, you ain't me. <coughs> but I'm here to say one thing to you. Coach said we could beat them. We just gotta get a new plan for the second half. Everybody say new plan. Yeah. Second half. Second half. So you know what happened? This program just for a second. Seven days, we worked on one game plan. He looked at us, he said, we're going to change everything. We got 10 minutes, bro, eight minutes and a half. You've been doing it the same way, and now you're in the 10th grade, and now it's going to change? Yes, because change is not changed until it's changed. You thought about it. You promised your grandma before she passed she was going to change. You looked your mom in the ear and went to God and prayed and told him he was going to change. But I'm going to say, now is the time. Can I say something to you? It changes everything. We step back out on that field. Ooh, man, we got it back. We started coming, coming back, coming back, coming back. It was crazy, crowd going crazy. And we came all the way back. We three points down, but the clock is ticking, ticking, ticking down. And we need one more miracle. And our QB drops back and throws a bomb. And this was for the game. Running down the edge of the sidelines. One of my good friends, my roommate, my boy Eric, he's a receiver. He ended up finishing his career with the Green Bay Packers. Let me tell you something. Eric was running down, dude all over. The dude ain't giving that ball up. They all went out. He's one inch from going out of bounds here, one foot from the back of the end zone. Ball coming, but with everything he has, he reaches for it. Can I say something to you today? You got to reach for it. I know you're the first one that's going to even just try to go to junior college and keep reaching, man. I know my girl, listen to me. Homeboy said he liked you, now he loved you. And your homegirl and your sister, they didn't take the scholarship because they didn't want to leave their boyfriend. But you, you know, they don't know your dream is too big and you're reaching for it. He reached, he didn't catch it. But he tipped it. He got close enough to tip it. Just keep going. He tipped it, and then the other hand helps pull it in, and it bobbles. The dream may always bobble. Don't worry about it. He gets hit. 
boom, it flips. And you know what happened? The stadium erupts. Because nobody knew, did he catch it, did he not catch it? Was he in, was he out? And the man with the striped shirt just put both hands up in the air. Touchdown! Crowd went crazy. Can I say something to you? I didn't come all the way to Cali to tell you a football story. I told the story for one reason. Because we didn't win that game the first half, we won that game. Second. Oh, I didn't hear you. Come on, we won that game, duh. Second. One more time, we won that game, duh. Second. There's somebody here today. You're just like me. You've had a bad first half. Your friends don't even know about your first half. Can I say something to you, Chris? Some people don't even know who was that person that was depressed, ready to give up on life. Listen, I had the one girl come up to us. Listen, I'm not joking. She came up to us and she said it like this. She said, thanks for coming to my school today. I needed to hear what you had to say. I wasn't even speaking. My boy John was. You know how some people speaking their words just go straight to the heart? And she said, thanks for letting me know my life is worth living in my dream. She said, and she was thinking about suicide and giving up your life. And she said, I won't be needing this any longer. And this young girl, I'm not joking. She reaches down in her thing and pulls out something and puts it in my homeboy John's hand and he opened the hand and looked and it was a big old giant bullet same one she was going to use that day she realized mm -mm. second half I don't know how much your boyfriend really hurt you but nobody really knows the wound I'm just saying come on keep reaching it don't let the ball stop you keep going for the dream and for my dude I know your boys is cool, man. And it's been cool hanging being average your whole life. But I want to say it's so much more fun for the victory. You know why I'm telling you this? Because I'm not talking from a book today. My own father, he never came one time to watch me one time. You know why? Because my father chose drugs over me first half. You said, what do you mean he chose drugs? I got two gigantic golden diamond rings on my hands. These rings got a lot of diamonds, a lot of gold. They got my name, my number, the stadium. As you know, $200,000 won't buy you one of these. The only way you get these, you gotta win them. They got my name, Davis, so on both of them. One for me, one for Pops. Pops never put one on because when he was in high school, he was hanging with them dudes who they fired it up, they getting a little drunk. You know, it always start off with a little bit. They never let you know that stuff will get you depressed. You know, his homeboys never said to him, they never said, listen, man, when you drink this and smoke this, you're gonna have a son and he's gonna be on TV. But as soon as you take this hit, you'll never see him play because they never tell you there's a high cost for low living. You don't want to pay the price. But what happened was my father got depressed, like everybody who getting high and getting drunk. You know what my father did, right? My father committed suicide when I was four years old. That's why I'm telling you this story. The bars. He left my mother in South Central LA all by herself. My mama didn't know what to do. So my mama started drinking and drinking and drinking. My mama became an alcoholic and she getting high. Let's just get right to the heart. And now mom's is lonely. You know what happened when mom get lonely, right? So mom dating one dude and another dude, and mom get that one boyfriend she thinks she in love with. See, some of you got good mamas and daddies, and I hope you go home and tell them thank you. But some of y'all been through this first half pain that I'm talking about. You know what really hurt? It hurt when your mama treated her boyfriend better than she treated you. Am I telling the truth? I had one Hispanic dude who was a good dude. He's like, man, I'm trying to do right. I want to go to school. I want to go to college. He's like, man, my mama with her boyfriend every day. He said, I got five little brothers and sisters. He said, man, I got to feed all of them, give them a little bath. I got to do my homework. I ain't going to work. He was like, what am I supposed to do? I said, keep pushing. Bro. Second half. So my mama did something. She didn't acknowledge my feelings. But she decided to let her boyfriend move in with us. The problem is... Giant fist, homeboy brutally beat my mama for six years. I'd be bawling and crying. Mama, why you let him live with us? Mom, kick him out, let him right back in. Kick him out, let him back in. Y'all know that old crazy business. First half. She can't pay the rent. When she paid the rent, big boy putting his fist through the walls. By the time I was as great as some of you, by the 10th grade, I'm not joking. School to school to school to school to school. We moving, moving, moving. I'm just here to say courage and keep going. Say, by the time I was in 10th grade, I was in my 19th different school. Right down there in Los Angeles, they gave me a little test. Y'all know the test, right? 
I can't read. Well, how you can't read? Well, I'm struggling, dude. I ain't dumb. I just got emotional issues. So here we go. I'm in a class. I'm in a class. I'm taking the test. Then I hear the sound. Give them my best. You know how you get motivated sometimes? Some of you are a little motivated now because there ain't nobody like you. You got the dream. You're going for Then I'm taking the test. Take that. Then I heard the sound. Shh. Look behind me. Then I heard it again. Shh. I looked to the side. I heard it again. Shh. 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 It's the sound of everybody changing pages. I'm still on the first page. Tears running down my face. They're laughing. I wipe the tears because you can't let the homie see you cry. Why am I crying? Because the bar said to me, you can't do it. The bar said, you can't do it. I grab the book, slam the book, almost quit because I got a few of you, you're on the edge of quit right now. You're showing up, but you ain't giving the effort, man. But as soon as I slammed the book down, there was a voice. Everybody say voice. voice. Choice. Voice. There's a teacher, Mr. Hutchinson, he looked at me and said, Keith, don't quit. Everybody say, don't quit. Don't quit. He simply said this. I'm going to give you these two words right here. He said, Keith, you don't have to be great to get started. You just got to get started. I'm going to ask you to get started. Come on. Hey, hey, another voice. This man, he was 70 years old. I'm young. He white. I'm black. He been in hundred countries. I ain't been in none other than LA. He said one word to me. I didn't realize this man had written books that sold millions. You ever had somebody say one sentence to you that changed your life? Do you know he's dead now? But what he said changed me forever. One sentence I'm gonna give to you. He said, "Keith, winners are very different than losers. For one reason, it ain't nothing to do with sports. So if you've never played a sport, this is for you. Here we go." He said, winners are different than losers because winners always look at what they're going to and losers always look at what they're going through. I said, Mama, I want to go to college. Mama, I want to go to USC. No, we don't live in the suburbs. No, she ain't got no money. No, my grades ain't good. I have no skill, but I got will. You got the will. You got the want to, you got the drive, you got the hope. All your friends, they hate on you, they laughing, but they don't know what you're reaching for. And can I tell you something? I just kept working and working and working and working. SAT score too low, uh, ACT too low, what I'm going for. And I finally got in there and I came in at the bottom, but it's okay. Because it ain't how you start, it's how you finish. And four years later, I was standing in Los Angeles receiving the most prestigious award they give out at USC. I'm receiving what's called the Howard Jones Award. They say tonight we present the Howard Jones Award to Mr. Keith Davis, the one gentleman graduating with the highest grade point average, academic All-American nominee, Scholar Award of Honor, Dean's List from the Business School. Our winner, Mr. Davis, I get the award. I'm making my speech, I'm doing great. I got the award, speech suit and tie, crowd going crazy, but I can't finish the speech because I look in the front row and there's only one lady I can see. I don't see a thousand people. I see one lady, my mama. And my mama in the front, she crying. And by the way, no more drugs, no more alcohol, no more crazy boyfriend, no more moving around. You know why? Because my mama living in the grave. Everybody say second half. Second half. And she crying, not because I'm getting high, drunk, or flunking out. Like some of my cousins, you know why she crying? Because she proud, making noise that only my mama and your mama know how to make when they really proud. <laughs> Let's give my mom and grandmas a big hand clap right now, all right? Everybody say big green. Second half. Can I say something to you today? Everybody, what shape is this bar in? You. Come on, can you? What shape is it in? You. I came to encourage you all the way to California today. It ain't never too late to make a U turn. Oh, hey, 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 you've been hanging with them. You and him been going out for two years straight. And ever since you've been going out with him, your grades have got lower and lower. But you ready to get rid of him because you coming up to the top. All my young ladies say, you turn. All my homies, yeah, you was down with him, bro. They was hanging with you, man. You hanging at lunch with him. You down with him. But you got to leave them friends alone. You know why? Because you can have more if you don't settle for less. Everybody say, you turn. You turn. So I'm standing on the top now. Hey, can I say something to you? I want to tell you that story for one reason. You know why? Because I got the phone call not long ago. My brother called and said, Keith, mom is sick. 
My mama passed away recently with a disease called cancer. I got that call. I flew all the way to LA. Dude, before I could get to the hospital, the disease had hit her so hard, dude. She couldn't even talk no more. I go into the hospital and I just grab her hand and I say, Mama, if you can hear me, move your hand. She moved her hand. Her son. I talked to her day and night. My brother, my brother, bigger than me. We talked to my mom. And said, she moved her hand. We talked to my mom. She can't talk, but she moved her hand. And then one day we go in. I don't care how big it is, tears running down my face. But I'm sharing the story for a good reason. Because her brother, my uncle, looked at me and said, I want to say one thing to you. Don't be sad. Your mother was so proud. Can I tell you something? I'm so glad when she passed, she didn't see me trying to be cool, showing her report card that says C, C minus, D, gives no effort. No, mom saw her son giving the best you turn. Maybe she turned the lights off for us for a second. Huh? <laughs> Something happened, right? Thank you, mom. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hey, y'all believe in signs? Somebody looking at you saying, Wake up! <laughs> hey, I ain't never had that happen. When I say that, never. Can I say something to you today? Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm glad my honor passed when we trying to be gangster. Showing up at school late. Talking back to the teacher. Mm -hmm. Head down. No, no, no. Proud. Last thing she was proud of, ladies. This thing called family. If I say family. Yeah. Let me talk to you about family for a second. I was right down there in Cali. I'm in high school. My boy kept tapping me like this. Keep look, keep look. I said, what? He said, that's that new girl. She fine. <laughs> we had a new girl checking the school. Homegirl was walking from the office to the cafeteria. We were scoping her like a radar. You know what I'm talking about? Like every step of the way, we was just staring her down like. <laughs> <laughs> My dudes know what I'm talking about. If you stare at her too long, everything becomes beautiful. We was like. Dang, look at her ankles. Wow. <laughs> ladies, ladies, listen. She was a track star. She was literally one of the fastest girls in the state of California. I'm not joking. So me and my homeboy, we go to the track, beat this girl to my high school, the gun shoot, boom! Homegirl come out the blocks. I had never seen a girl run that fast in my life. But the thing was, this new girl, she was so beautiful. It just looked to me like she was running in slow motion, like I'm gonna be real with my dudes out there, man. Homegirl was just like And y'all know the milk commercial, it says milk does a body good. I tapped my boy, I said, man, homegirl was raised on a dairy farm. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Why am I telling that story? My mother, my mama loved that girl. That girl went on to run track at UCLA, one of the fastest women's track teams ever at UCLA. Their record still stands to this day. That young girl ended up winning a silver medal in the 200 meters in the USA Track and Field Championships in the Mass Division. My mama loved that girl because that girl, that's my beautiful, beautiful wife right now. Everybody say something. Like that. Like, 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 daddy, not daddy. <laughs> hey, hey, come on now. Some of you had confusion in your home like I did, but I put my hands on their head every day. I got some money came by at my house called Peace, and I say to my sons, you're a champion. You're one of a kind. You're the head, not the tail. You're born. They're getting bigger and bigger. Why am I sharing this with you? Come on, come on, listen to me, man. Come on, you gotta have a vision. Second half. Different choices, different voices. And ladies, I'm only sharing the story with you because she's my wife now, but she's my girlfriend, and I will walk with her. I'm at UCLA. She at UCLA. I'm at USC. She's at UCLA. And 
they were, we had met in high school, listen. And so I would walk with my girl, and her friends would come up, and they whisper stuff in her ear. And I didn't know what they said until one day I heard her friend whisper to her and say, Oh, girl, you so lucky. But she didn't really say it like that. She said it like black girls in L.A. say it. Oh, girl, 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 you so lucky. <laughs> then her homegirl just kind of flipped her hair back like that. But it wasn't really her hair, it was that weave. You know what I'm talking about? Hey ladies, I ain't got no problem with the weave, because if you can't grow it, then sew it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Black girls got weave, white girls in the Spanish, y'all got extensions, it's the same old stuff. All, right, here we go. All my girls say it out loud when we say, I can't achieve. I can't achieve. Without a weave, girl, you don't need no weave, all right? You know that stuff. That's all the second half anyway, it's all good, all right? I'm tripping. I'm tripping. But you know what I said to her one day? Come on, we're dealing with a different thing right now. Here we go. I said this. I asked them, well, they asked me. And I said, I said, why are y'all always calling her lucky? Because we're all friends, right? Her friends say, keep on be real with you. <coughs> Think about this. Back then we were all, we 18, 19, from this home. 17 is this. She said, we ain't never seen a dude who treat his girl so special, so valuable, so one of a kind. And I looked at her and I said, that ain't my girl. And she was like, what? I said, that ain't my girl, that ain't my girlfriend, that ain't my wife to be. I said, that's my queen. <laughs> For all my ladies, if you're going out with a dude and he don't treat you like a queen, he don't even deserve you because you one of a kind. You're valuable. You're special. All my ladies say second half. Amen. Second half. Second half. Second half. Second half. Had a girl hit me up with a little message on the Instagram. She said, I think it was meant for me to hear you today. She had been going out with this dude for two years. She said, I felt like I really loved him. So she gave him her virginity because she said, I thought we would be together forever. Then she wrote in gigantic letters, wrong. We broke up. She said, because she found out he had another girlfriend. You know how I go, listen ladies, I'm gonna say, I'm, she, she was asking me like she should get back with him and stuff for a second. Listen, here we go, here we go, here we go. And she said, but I decided to make a change. I'm getting rid of her because her grades was up, now she hanging with this dude. Y'all all know how it go. Some of y'all in high school and the dude you hanging with, he ain't even, he out of school, he ain't doing nothing great for his life, but you are valuable. But I like the way she said it, and I said, I'm going to read it because then she's your age and you can make the determination of what you do from that. She said, I'm making a change. I'm getting rid of him because today I realized, and she wrote in big giant letters, that I am a queen. So all of her questions about should she get back with him, should she do this, I said, you a queen. And I gave her the quote my girl would give her. Remember, you can have more if you don't settle for less. All my fellas, roll with me for a second. My teammates laughing at me. You know why they laughing at me? Why? Because they ain't seen no dude treat a girl like that. They, they call it, you, you know, some of the songs that we playing, you can't even say them words. I can't say them on the mic. So here they go. I said, dude, that ain't funny. And they roll with me for a second. So I made a decision to treat every girl valuable, special, respect. I said, bro, when you see your mama get beat like that for six years straight, you wish the dude would treat your mama, my mama. I wish somebody would have treated my mama like a queen. So I can't change my past, but I can change my future. I'm doing that. I'm gonna just give a challenge for my man. So this is what I said to my teammates. I said, bro, you born a male, but you have to become a man. Being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of choice. We need a change in the school. Come on, you turn. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No more cuts on the arm. No 
no more suicide letters. Listen, I, I, I can't even get into it. My time is up. Listen, I can't even get to the suicide letters. Depressed. People giving up. I can't get in. I can't even say it no more. But I'm here to say one thing to you. This is your time. It's your day. Choices and voices. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to close out with something real high. First of all, y'all got that white card in your hand. Everybody grab that white card for a second. Listen to me. Listen to me. I get messages all kind of way. On my Twitter, my Instagram, my email, I'm listening. But this is the best way right here. I've had so many letters on these white cards. It's the only way I can talk with you and you with me. Because they won't let me sit and spend time with each and every one of you because we'll be here tomorrow. I got other schools. So this is what I want to do though. Some of you today. You know, felt like giving up, not just on school, not basketball, or life. Some of your relationships need to change. Some of your moms and daddies, I know it hurt when they gave up on you, but you ain't giving up on yourself. This is what I want to do. I'm going to allow you to write anything you would like on the card. I love to hear your story, whatever you'd like to share with me. The cards come directly to me, not to your teacher, okay? I give you a minute, two minutes. I'm gonna allow you to write anything you like on the cards. If you don't want to write nothing, that's cool. But many of the students are first assembly. They are writing it on the way out at the back. I have some of my assistants that are helping me. These are businessmen and sponsors. They have some buckets you can drop them right in. The cards come right to us. But I'm gonna just allow you. If there's anything we can do to help you, some of you need some help. You need encouragement. Come on. Well, some of you are making a different choice with a different voice, a different dream. So I'm going to allow you to take a minute or two, write anything you like on the card. Go ahead and you can write anything on the card. Okay. Is there anybody who doesn't have anything to write with? Okay, all of you got something. Go ahead and just write for a second, okay? And then I'm going to close with something real, real, real special at the end, okay? Real special. Y'all are going to love this. All right, we're going to close this thing high today. That's what we're going to do, right? That's the two. This next gentleman I'm going to introduce. You guys are going to love him. First of all, he's pretty big time. You may have seen him on stage with some of the top artists in the nation like Snoop Dogg, SOB, Wiz Khalifa, E-40. Everybody say, what's up? What's up? You may have seen him on YouTube. We got over a million hits on his YouTube. You may have seen him on Q97 or Great Day on Fox 26, or KC24, or even ABC. Let me tell you a little bit, you may have seen her in the video with my man, uh, Marcy, or even, uh, 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 first of all, and I told you a little bit about YouTube, but he took time out of his busy schedule to volunteer his time to come here to be with you guys, to close it out. I want y'all to give it up for my friend, my man, Mr. Ray Young. Let's give him a hand clap, everybody. Huh? He's gonna close this out real cool, all right? How's everybody doing in here? Let me hear you make some noise one time. That was nice. I think I think the first group we had was a little louder, so I'm gonna ask you one time. Let me hear you make some noise one time. All right, y'all ready to turn up? Let's go. Forget being on that kill tip. I ain't a cop and you ain't Michael Brown. Chill quick. My foundation, pound nations. Look, I built this. I heard he found Satan trying to get his heel quick. Never be, never be. Not even if you beg of me. Why do I feel like I'm out of my mind when I rhyme? I keep it back when he's inside of it. Hit it when I rhyme, I'm gonna with bars that be the death of me. Hey, y'all want the truth? I got the recipe. That's the necessity. I need to be heard. Trying to get my people out this mess and they can flee to the birds. Living a life that kill pop and dread. Back in pill popping days and they be strapped. So before I nap, I still got to pray. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how I need you. All this artistry has made it hard for me to see you. But I still got my sense of will. I spit the truth and spit the real. Keep me from cussing, but trust it ain't no way to. Look, zero to a million. I get hype and I go silly when I put in the Sicilian internationally known. I bet I forget it forever. I'm better be ripping the rhythm and separate enemies. Better be ready to dip. I'm about that action for the crowd. Hey.
Me and y'all made some noise one time. Y'all gonna be totally short on time. I'm only gonna do like half of it, and then I'm gonna holla at y'all real quick, alright? This song right here is called Underdog. So you said that you were underdog, so you said that you were underdog, but you wanna take the summer off, said that you were underdog, so you said that you were underdog, when you know you got a sunny bug, they can have a car with a roof. Be a whole lot smarter than you. I'm gonna hear be a harbor recruit, and nobody have that should be working harder than you. This is what you've been wanting, but why? Do you have someone to feed? Are you working for Someone in your family that you come back with an answer if ever you leave. An answer to everything. All of the struggle and pain. But I'm ready, I polish my skills, every muscle is training. I wake up and hustle and bang. So you said that you were underdog. So you said that you were underdog. But you pay. So you said that you were underdog. So you said that you were underdog. But you pay. So you said that you were underdog. So you said that you were underdog. But you pay. So you said that you were underdog. So you said that you were underdog. Well, let's get it, man. Let's get it. I gotta be the man for my fam. Make a plan for my fam. Hustle, work, put God first. Stand with the man. Put my plan in his hands. Hey, let's get it. I gotta be the man for my fam. Make a plan for my fam. Hustle, work, put God first. Yeah. All right, y'all. Make some noise one time. I wish I could have finished that song, y'all. But this part is more important, and I'm gonna make it real quick. I just want you guys to know a little something about myself. When I was in school, I thought the cool thing to do was to get in trouble. I was, I was impressing the wrong people. I was trying to impress my friends, right? So in impressing my friends, I did things like making fun of the teacher to make them laugh. You know what I mean? I would, I would did school with them just to be accepted when I knew I wasn't supposed to. I would do things, I would get in fights just so my friends could have a little bit of joy and laughter. But in all doing this and trying to impress my friends, I was breaking my mother's heart. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. That you got friends and you got a mother. There is no comparison. This is who you ride for. This is the one that you're supposed to be real to. Your mom, your dad, the people taking care of you, those are your homies, I promise you. When you get when you, when you guys get out of school, man, one of your friends is gonna go this way, you're gonna go work and move over here, but your family will be there. So impress the right people. One more thing I wanna touch on is when I was in school, I was a bully. I wasn't a real bad one, but I would call people names, I would make fun of them, and uh, it, it was the wackiest and weakest thing that I've ever done. Picking on people that didn't want no problems. So, be a good-hearted person, be kind, and uh, one more thing, man, those cards that he gave you. Write down anything that you're feeling. Don't be afraid. This is one of the only opportunities that you get to where your, your friends ain't gonna hear it, your mom, your parents, your teachers ain't even gonna see them. It's all gonna go to him. So if anybody has any, write it down, write down what your issues are. If you're dealing with depression, if you're dealing with suicide, just remember this, we came here because we care about you. And it's unconditional. I'm not here just to tell you, oh, everything's gonna get better and then leave and go to the next town. It's, it's unconditional. My name is Ray Young. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook. You can message me if you need help. And just know that we love you, we care about you. Know that you're amazing, you're important, your ideas are great, your opinions matter, and your family would not be the same without you. So just remember that, guys. You guys are all amazing. Thank you guys for having me. My name's Ray Young. Let's give it up for my man, Ray Young. Everybody, let's give your teachers a big hand clap, all right? Administrative staff. For allowing us to come, we got all our business, man. Hey, you guys are awesome. We're gonna hang out here for lunch, and then we got the middle school after him, and then we head back. But I'm gonna give a shout out. My Instagram, oh, you know what? Let me do that. Can I do that real quick? My Instagram is like all over from South Africa to Japan and everywhere. I'm gonna hit a little video on just with y'all, let them know what's up. And Kolinga, is that cool? Can we do that real quick? Just for a second, okay? All right, let me, do, let me hit it like this. I'm gonna do it like this. Yeah, sir. All right, so, so I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm gonna tell them where I'm at, and then I'm gonna spin around and we'll get up because I know time is up. All right, so I'm spending the day in Cali, but not just in Cali. I'm in the wildest, coolest, most exciting place in the nation, Colinga, California. Y'all see how they do it here in Colinga? And if you notice on the video, Colinga has some of the most beautiful high school girls in the nation. Thank y'all. God bless y'all. Shout out. God bless y'all. Y'all have a great day. Uh